planning a statistical survey grade C level 7 topic okay this sort of topic is quite wishy-washy there's lots of things that could be involved in this I'm trying to going to try and cover most of them I'm going to do an ex um, work through an example and then we'll do it look at an exam type question okay so the ex example we're going to look at is a survey into boring books from a library now the first thing we've got to do um, obviously when we do a survey is ask questions when we ask a question we've got to try and avoid having a biased question so for example if I was asking the question how many books do you borrow from a library I wouldn't say books are boring how many books do you borrow from a library because I am um, I'm giving my opinion or stating an opinion and then asking a question which could stop people from wanting to answer correct you know um, honestly or you could say books are very important to to help people learn things how many books do you book from a library again you're leading people to maybe change their their normal answer to that so it's got to be nice and factual nice and simple so how many books do you borrow from the library from a library okay now this is when you're doing exam questions this is very common that they'll leave a question like this and then they'll ask you to criticize it and the first thing we can do is well when you're asking somebody something a quantity you've got to give a time frame for that quantity so how many books do you borrow from a library well that could be a day a week a month a year we don't know there's not been asked so um, I don't know it doesn't actually matter what you put here but you need a time frame so per month I'm gonna say okay so you must put a time frame in there it's not going to be judged on what time frame you use but uh, there must be something there to qualify how many you're going to borrow over a certain time okay so that's the first thing give a time frame second thing is um, we'll, often in maths we are looking at response boxes the number of response boxes is important I'm going to just stick to three here but quite often we have things like this so and you're asked to criticize what's wrong with this and hopefully you can see that first of all not all possible responses are catered for in these response boxes what if you don't borrow any books what if you borrow five or more books these only uh, what and also you have overlapping boxes what if you borrow two books it could be either of these so you have gotta be careful when you're creating a response box to actually cover everything so let's actually just cross those two out Oops, not very, not very well. Um, and so long as your response boxes cover all the possible things with no overlap, then it's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter that it's not very widely spread or you, you're not really thinking about how many values it's going to be. You just need to make sure your response boxes cover all possible values. You could go from zero to anything, four plus. And um, these, when you when you're given an answer like two, you know which box to put it in so that's the that's the basics for it um, also when you're asking us doing a survey you've got to think about some things when you where when and why you're doing it so um, where you're gonna ask a question so if I'm asking about a question about borrowing books from a library if I go and stand outside a library and ask that question my answers are only going to be from people that actually use the library what about all those people that don't use the library um, when I ask it what happens if I go to the library in town and I ask it on a Monday at 10 o'clock in the morning then I'm only going to be asking people that don't go to work or don't go to school about borrowing books so if I asked on a Saturday um, where people tend not to be working although some people still work on a Saturday but more people don't uh, people don't go to school on Saturday mostly um, then I'll get a different set of responses and even even um, I said the, the time of day, the day of the week, even the time of the season, the time of the year. So if you're asking people in winter, maybe they're less likely to go out than if you ask people in the summer. So where and when are very important as well. Okay, so let's have a look at a, a GCSE question. So this is on an exam paper recently. So Mason's doing a survey to find out how many magazines people buy. He uses this question on his questionnaire, how many magazines do you buy? 
write two things wrong with this question. Okay, so thinking about this, first of all, there's no time frame. Um, no time limit like per month or day or week or whatever. Second thing, um, what if someone, oh, something, someone um, buys more than 12? Okay, no response box of more than 12, or uh, 4 is in two boxes. So the response 4 could be in either box. If you were asked to rewrite this better, you would say per month or week or something, and you would go 1 to 4, uh, you're probably better off doing 0 to 3, 4 to 8, then 4 to 7. 8 to 12, uh, 11 and then have another box saying 12 plus and that would cover everything. Um, Mason asked his friends at school to do this questionnaire he, this may not be a good sample to use give one reason why well he's only asking his friends so small group um, only people of his same age Or similar age, um, only school children and not just general people. Okay, so you're not asking the general public, you're just asking people you know. So, quite often, this sort of thing can be often that you're, you're said that they are uh, males or females, so it's not incorporating all the possible genders. And obviously, age, you need to have a range of ages you're asking to get a good survey. Okay, hopefully that's helped out a little bit there.